Welcome to Rocky Watches Movies. I know it's not anywhere near October 31st, but we're taking a deep dive into John Carpenter's legendary 1978 masterpiece, Halloween, because any time is a good time to watch this terrifying classic. Get ready to be shocked by the behind-the-scenes details of this low-budget masterpiece that changed horror forever. So grab some popcorn, dim the lights, and prepare to learn some killer facts in 17 Things You Never Knew About Halloween. John Carpenter and his then-girlfriend Deborah Hill whipped up the script for Halloween in a whirlwind 10 days. Originally titled The Babysitter Murders, the story lacked a certain spark. It was producer Erwin Yablans who suggested to switch to Halloween, and Carpenter himself credits this shift in the moment the film truly came alive. Facing budget constraints, Carpenter further tightened the script by condensing the events from several days to a single suspenseful night. This decision not only saved money, but also emphasised the vulnerability of the characters on this inherently spooky night. The script offered little description for Michael Myers' mask simply calling for the pale, neutral features of a man. In a stroke of budgetary brilliance, production designer Tommy Lee Wallace found two cheap latex masks at a local toy store both painted white for a mere $2 each. One was a distorted Captain Kirk mask from Star Trek, the other a replica of Emmett Kelly's clown character Weary Willy. Carpenter, drawn to the unsettling blankness it conveyed, opting for the modified Kirk mask, unknowingly creating a horror icon in the process. Locking in at a meagre $300,000, Halloween was a shoestring production. This wasn't new territory for director John Carpenter, who had helmed his previous film Assault on Precinct 13 for an even tighter budget of $180,000 according to reports. Halloween's filming was a whirlwind, completed in just 20 days during the spring of 1978 for an October release. This tight schedule clashed with the film's autumn setting. Production designer Tommy Lee Wallace's resourcefulness shone through with reused fake leaves, but the limitations are evident in the unseasonal green trees lining the streets. Director John Carpenter even considered altering the trees, but budget constraints kept the foliage a summery green. Producer Erwin Yablans specifically wanted no blood or gore in Halloween. The actual violence seen on screen is kept to a minimum and is left to the imagination. Rather, he wanted a character-driven, compelling drama with all the right scares in all the right places. I had this idea we could orchestrate the scares and manipulate the audience, said Yablans. I cited the example of following a protagonist to the right side of the screen, only to surprise you on the left side. John Carpenter wove personal connections into the fabric of Halloween. The seemingly ordinary name Michael Myers belonged to the British film distributor who championed his earlier work, Assault on Precinct 13. Laurie Strode is named after an ex-girlfriend, while Tommy Doyle paid homage to a character from Hitchcock's rear window. Even Sheriff Lee Brackett held a hidden tribute, a nod to the sci-fi legend who penned classics like The Empire Strikes Back. One of the scary movies that Lindsay Wallace watches on TV is the 1951 version of The Thing, also known as The Thing from Another World. Carpenter would later remake The Thing in 1982, though his version is more heavily based on the source material, a 1938 novella by John W. Campbell Jr. called Who Goes There. Behind the mask of Michael Myers lurked a shared history. John Carpenter's friend from USC film school Nick Castle played the iconic villain for most of the film. Castle would later collaborate with Carpenter on the screenplay for Escape from New York. Production designer Tommy Lee Wallace filled in playing Michael whenever needed. The unmasked Michael Myers, however, was a one-shot wonder actor Tony Moran, who later appeared on shows like The Waltons and Chips. He received a mere $250 for his brief but impactful scene. The script for Halloween treats Michael Myers' name with a chilling scarcity, uttered only twice, once in the opening scene and again when partially unmasked. The script only refers to Michael as a shape. Even the credits reflect this choice, crediting Michael solely as the shape. This wasn't an oversight, Director John Carpenter deliberately stripped Michael of his humanity by withholding his name and focusing on his chilling form. Carpenter ensured audiences wouldn't find a shred of relatability in this embodiment of pure evil. 
to stretch the film to a two-hour runtime demanded by television broadcasts, Carpenter added 12 minutes of footage during the production of Halloween 2 in 1981. These scenes primarily focused on Donald Pleasance's Dr. Loomis and Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode. The scenes included moments like Dr. Loomis at a hearing to review young Michael's incarceration at the sanitarium and confronting a young Michael in his room, Loomis discovering Michael has escaped and scrawled the word sister on his door, and a concerned Laurie asking her friend Linda about the man she keeps seeing around their neighbourhood. The abandoned air of the Myers house wasn't a clever set design, it was the real deal. The crew stumbled upon the dilapidated structure and filmed it as is, perfectly capturing its eerie atmosphere. It wasn't until the last shot on the last day of production, which is actually the first shot in the movie, that the entire crew banded together to paint the house and dress it with furniture to make it look lived in. Independent producer Erwin Yablans and financier Mustafa Akkad inspired by both Psycho and The Exorcist, sought out John Carpenter to direct a story about a killer stalking babysitters. The casting of Jamie Lee Curtis, daughter of Psycho star Janet Lee, added an interesting layer. Curtis would become a scream queen in her own right, while the name Sam Loomis served as a subtle homage. In Psycho, Sam Loomis was the boyfriend of Marion Crane, played by Curtis's mother Lee. In Halloween, Dr. Sam Loomis becomes the psychiatrist determined to stop Michael Myers. These small details hint at the influence of Hitchcock's classic on Carpenter's own horror masterpiece. The origins of Michael Myers have often been tied to John Carpenter's college experience. During a visit to a psychiatric institution, Carpenter reportedly encountered a young patient who left a lasting impression. Some accounts describe the boy as staring at Carpenter with an unsettling coldness, sparking the inspiration for Michael Myers. Horror heavyweights Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing were initially offered the role of Dr. Loomis, but the shoestring budget of Halloween proved to be a sticking point for both actors. Lee, however, would later express regret at his decision, leaving audiences to wonder what his take on the determined psychiatrist might have been. While Halloween unfolds in the seemingly ordinary Midwestern town of Haddonfield, Illinois, its true backdrop lies on the West Coast. Filming took place entirely in South Pasadena and Hollywood, California. Keen viewers might spot the occasional palm tree betraying the film's geographical disconnect, a subtle reminder of Hollywood's magic. Interestingly, the name Haddonfield plays homage to co-writer and producer Deborah Hill's real-life hometown in New Jersey. John Carpenter, known for composing the music for his films, created Halloween's iconic score in a mere three days. The haunting theme itself stemmed from a simple childhood memory, a drumming exercise on the bongos taught by his father. The original script called for Dr. Loomis to be shocked by Michael's missing body at the film's climax. However, during filming, veteran actor Donald Pleasance proposed a different approach. He suggested Loomis wouldn't be surprised, but rather anticipate Michael's disappearance. John Carpenter, appreciating the added depth to the character, opted to shoot both versions. Ultimately, Pleasance's stoic portrayal resonated stronger, solidifying the ending's sense of unease. And there you have it, folks. You now know a little bit more about Halloween. If you enjoyed the video, which I presume you did as you got this far, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming to Rocky Watches Movies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.